I'm scared of you too. Uh, Boy story. Hey y'all. Welcome back. Welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Jasmine. I'm Seth. We're renovating our RV, recording our whole process. If you'd like to follow along with our journey and you like us, subscribe. <laughs> We also have an Instagram, which is the same handle as this account at Small Kind Life. If you want to follow, kind life. no, yeah. Small Kind Life. <laughs> if you want to follow us there, this week was a little bit of a challenge for us. I had to take two full days to work because I'm a teacher. On top of that, our only mode of transportation broke down. We didn't get as much as we would have liked to get done. Did I say that right? We definitely came across some new obstacles within the RV. Coming as an outsider with no experience in electrical work or, or construction or building work, I feel out of my league. There oftentimes is a solution out there that probably comes easily to people who have experience, but for us, we're learning as we go. It's time consuming and intimidating. That's why we're kind of a little behind. Obviously, we're not well versed in this, so we're, we're taking our time and making sure that we're doing it right. We're just trying to be honest with the whole process and all the obstacles that we've had to go through this week, so. Yeah, I definitely wanted to preface this week's episode with with this information because people who have come in contact with me are like, oh, how's it looking in there? Is it done? And I'm like, no way man it's not done at all this is really just our first time and it's fun it's difficult but it's it's like a, a good challenge when is this it is the beginning of week three our only car died on us so we are lucky to have the rv seth is a mess yeah sure i'll get that i'll get all of it so salty we're getting some lumber for the framing product to get off the rust of the steel beams on top of the ceiling. Use this beforehand to take off the loose bits. Safety goggles here. Screws? Screws. What about screws? Hey guys, right now I'm going to use the wire brush that we got from Home Depot and work on getting this off. So it's like, it used to be all really corroded and now look at it, it's getting cleaner. You see how dirty my nose is and my mask. All right, I'm gonna get back to it. See you guys. Seth carries the tools. I carry the coffee. Both are equally as important. I just talked for like five minutes and then realized that the video was not running. So I, hello guys. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, funny. this week is all about framing out the ceiling. As you saw before, we had a ton of water damage. So we had to rip everything out. So what Seth is doing is he's going along our steel studs that are already implanted and he's making sure that it's all clean. The debris is out so that when we stick our lumber beams up there, they fit nice and flush. I am figuring out the wiring. We literally came in two hours after we bought the RV and just started ripping. <laughs> we didn't do the task of making sure we were identifying the wiring after we, we were ripping stuff out. We had all these fixtures, some that we didn't need, things like stereo speaker, whole TV, antenna, cable system. Don't worry, our AC power is off. Our, our battery ha switch has been turned off, so these things are safe. <laughs> but we have wiring all throughout the RV that needed to be put into our ceiling frame. It's a lot of like layout planning and mental work because I've got to keep in mind what wires I need to keep, what wires I need to toss, what wires we want to add in. So 
Stay tuned. Stay tuned. So very shortly after messing around with some wires, I realized that we had more obstacles than I anticipated and I had to stop to do a bit of research. What I've learned about RV structures, things like cabinets, the walls, the dinette, they're placed very specifically to house wiring. And so we had all these weird places where, where we had like outlets. Outlets, no outlets are through walls in our RV. They're like under the kitchen cabinet, which we ripped out. So I had to do some research to figure out what I'm gonna do for our outlets and where are some other unique places I can install them so that we don't have to just rip out a piece of the wall. I feel like this is the stage where people want to hire an electrician and my mind automatically just goes, no. Maybe we should. So I feel like I'm this close to understanding it and I want to be able to do this myself. I don't have like a mentor or a teacher right now to kind of guide me through this electric system. So I'm doing all my own research and it's very intimidating. I know I keep saying that. I'm going for it. I think what I'm gonna do right now is kind of draw a rough layout, outlining all our wiring. And a one, and a two, and a three. We got done clearing up where the beam, where we're putting new beams at, and Jasmine figured out all of the electrical. She, she did all the hard work on it. I made this janky sketch. <laughs> Outlines where all our lights and outlets will go. We only plan to have six lights in the rv and only three outlets we're gonna get some get some lunch and then we're gonna treat the steel beams with the clean strip so we're that's just gonna spray it why seth went through with the wire brush and got off all the little corroded hanging bits so that we can have a semi smooth surface to apply mm -hmm. the clean strip and on top of that it it not just only takes off rust but it also preserves the metal and uh, protects it from water and future rusting. Yeah, this is a, the least amount of work we've ever had to do in a but day. It, but it feels like it's the most of, important amount of yeah, work. Yeah, gutting was just like physical toil. Seriously, we would work six hours a day, but our backs, our necks would hurt. That's hands really hurt. A little strong hand. and I'm spraying it. And then tomorrow, the rust should come off in sort of a white residue, and then you just wipe it all off, and then we will be ready to attach some wooden beams to those steel studs up there. What's up, guys? <laughs> You're over here at my stepdad Paul's house. This is basically where I grew up here in California, so. It's nice to be here. Open space. Yes, we're thankful for everyone who's been helping us, lending us tools and advice. Today we are lucky to have access to all Paul's tools and his open garage instead of working at, literally on a busy street in yeah. the in middle, the of, middle the city. of midtown, downtown Sacramento. And why don't you tell them what we're doing today? Uh, or right now? Right now we're wiping off the, the rust We've got a bowl of water. Some cloths. These are literally, literally whiteboard cloths that I used to use for my classroom. It's kind of crazy. It already looks better just from the spray. Seth is taking out the last two wooden beams. And I'm about to measure for all the replacement wooden beams. Third ones. And then we're going to have to screw it in from this beam. Seth has cut the first 
steam and we just want to see if it fits. I hope. Can't go any more in that? Like, no, no. on that corner. Yeah, I guess half an inch. Half an inch off. Just do one, don't do all of them. Did you hear our conversation? So we're going to trim off half an inch and see if it's up there. And if not, we'll go half an inch more. Make sure that if you are planning to screw drill, oh, drill into a metal with the right the right screws so we got these self drilling screws self drilling so what it does is you don't have to have something with the thread on it when you drill since uh metal can be kind of hard to do that we ran into a little bit of a problem we're gonna put our support beams up up there and in these grooves we want to put beams but look screws coming from the roof of the rv that are getting in the way of the wood blocks. Don't know, we didn't see that before. Since we couldn't fit our lumber beams into the sides of the RV, we just decided to move them in about an inch or two, so that way we're still providing vertical support. Good news, the first couple of beams, <laughs> look at this. The first couple of beams are in successfully. There's one right there. Here's our second row, and we're just gonna keep on going. It's the end of our work day. I'm not sure if we accomplished a whole lot because we encountered a lot of challenges that had a stopping what we were doing and recalibrating how we were going to work around it. We encountered some issues trying to drill through the metal studs. We did use a drill bit that is supposed to penetrate through metal, but for some reason, certain studs would not give in. So we kind of just paused at the progress we made and decided to call it a day. Wasabi Wabi! I am working on the RV alone today. Seth is in the building across from me filming a podcast episode for the coffee shop that he works for. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, Seth was a barista and then was promoted to manager of the second branch of his coffee shop. Anyways, I don't know why I'm out of breath. I'm taking advantage of this actually because the coffee shop that he works at let us borrow their extension cord. We're using their exterior outlet so that we can use the plug-in electric saw to finish cutting the rest of the ceiling beams. Hopefully I'll get that done in time before Seth is done with his podcast episode. With his podcast episode. All right, thanks for hanging in there and sticking with us on our week three of this journey. Next week will be better. Next week will be better. Will and we'll be better. <laughs> no, okay. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.